Hi, I'm Ms. Wong. Let's have a look at estimating probabilities. Sometimes when we do a random experiment, the outcomes don't have the same probability. So the outcomes might be biased or they're just uneven. When that happens, we can do a few things. We can estimate the probability. So we can do a smart guess on the probability. And we can do this in four ways. We can use subjective probability, probability from data, simulation, or probability from area. We're going to look at each of these in this video. Subjective probability. Sometimes the probability is assigned a value just on the basis of experience. For example, a sports journalist may suggest that Australia has a 60% chance of winning the next Ashes series, relying on his, his or her judgment. Another journalist might well assign the probability an entirely different value. Such probabilities are called subjective probabilities, and whether or not they are accurate, estimates of the true probability would be open to dispute. Probabilities from data. So this is when we conduct experiments and the more times we do it, the more accurate it is. And we record what we want. For example, let's say we wanted tails and we're tossing a coin. If we tossed a coin once and we got tails, it could indicate that's a 100% chance of obtaining tail, but that is not very accurate. If we tossed a coin, let's say three times and we obtain two tails out of the three times, that'll be two out of three. That's still not very accurate, but if we toss it many, many times, let's say we toss it a thousand times, we might end up getting 502 tails and then 498 heads, which means the probability of tail in that case will be 502 over a thousand, which is close to a half. So it's close to what it's meant to be. So we can see that the more times we do the experiment, the closer it is to the actual probability. Now this proportion of trials that resulted in this event is called the relative frequency of the event. So frequency is how often something happened. How many times did the tail appear? A relative frequency is us putting as a fraction. It appeared 502 over a thousand times. So relative frequency. So relative frequency is the number of times that our event we want occurs over the number of times we did the experiment. So in the previous discussion is a thousand times. So 502 over a thousand times. And we can see that the more trials, the closer it gets to the actual probability. So here we have the probability of drawing a pin uh, with the point up. And it's not even landing the pin on the side or point up. It's not going to be 50-50. So since it's not symmetrical, the assumption of equally likely outcomes cannot be used to determine the probabilities. So our strategy is to estimate the probability to by tossing and seeing how many times the pin points up and we count these. So let's say this is a fancy graph to describe what we said before about the heads and tails. So that you can see that the number of tosses increases the blue dot, the result of the probability, becomes closer and closer to just a single value. Remember when we tossed a coin three times it could give us two tails or three tails and it makes the probability two thirds or one or hundred percent and it was fluctuating but as we toss the coin many many times like a thousand or two thousand we can see that it's getting closer to 50 percent so here for the experiment with the pin the probability let's say we the number of tosses is 10 you can see the probability looks like it's 90 percent or 9 out of 10 but the more we toss the pin we can see that the probability is actually closer to 0.6 3.62. So this graph is just trying to describe to you that the more experiments you conduct or trials, the more the number of the probability converges to what it's meant to be. So the red line is what it's meant to be and you can see the blue dots converging or coming closer to the red line. So to summarize from the graph, it may be seen that 
As the number of trial repetitions of the experiment increases, the estimated probability converges to the value and then stays fairly stable. If the same experiment is repeated many, many times, the relative frequency of any particular event will stabilize to a constant value. This limiting value, so for in our case it's 0.6 something there, of the relative frequency is then considered to be the probability of the event. So this second method of predicting probability is pretty good as long as you have many trials. So relative frequency becomes the probability when the trials is many. So to recap what we just said, the probability from data, when the number of trials is sufficiently large, the observed relative frequency of an event, let's say A, becomes close to the actual probability of A. Example 1. Two biased six-sided dies were used for the following experiment. The first die was thrown 500 times and we obtained 78 sixes. And the second die was thrown 700 times and we obtained 102 sixes. If you wish to throw a six, which die would you use? Well, it sounds like there's 102 there, but we have to find the relative frequency to see which one is the one that's going to give us a higher probability of 6. So, die 1, 78 over 500, that's 0 0.156. Dice 2, 102 over 700, that is 0 0.146. So, when we did the maths, we can see that the first dice is the better choice. Lastly, probabilities from area. So we assume that the probabilities of all points in an area are equally likely. And we just count the probability of the area we want over the total probability that we can have. Example two, a dart is thrown at random onto a board that has the shape of a circle shown. Calculate the probability that the dart will hit the shaded region. So what we want is the red part and the whole area is what we could throw the dart to. So the shaded area is large circle minus the smaller circle. We know this area of a circle is pi r squared. So r for the large one is 14, r for the little one is seven. So we can simplify that to get 147 pi. Now the area of the, the, uh, the probability of the shaded area is that over the total probability, the total area, the total area was 14 squared pi or 196 pi the area of the bigger circle so the area of shaded over the area of the whole circle and if you put that in a calculator we obtain three quarters that's it for me today revise the four ways we can estimate probabilities so we have from area we did it from um, relative frequency which when the trials increases it's closer to the probability and we looked at uh, subjective probability which is a guess from experience which was with the worst one out of the ones we discussed today okay thank you for watching i'll see you next time bye